Why is this night different from all other nights? Indeed. Running your own little Seder is actually pretty simple. Some assembly is required, but it's not very complicated. So ah! don't panic. Just do a little quick preparation. First, we'll put together a Seder plate. If you don't have a Seder plate, you can use any plate in the house for this. First, we need a bone, typically lamb or chicken, but almost any bone will do. Some vegetarians use a roasted beet for this. Next, a little haroset. This is a mixture of nuts, fruit, wine, and spices. You'll need a bitter herb, typically horseradish, and a vegetable, usually parsley, but again, use what you have. Potatoes are also a traditional vegetable here. Finally, take a hard-boiled egg and roast it for a little bit in the oven. And if you're feeling ornery, you can add an orange. Make a stack of three pieces of matzah, cover that with a napkin. You'll need a little bowl of salt water and a wine glass for each person. Finally, set out two extra glasses for Elijah and Miriam. Begin your Seder by lighting the festival candles. The blessing for this is Le Hadlik Ner Shel Yom Tov. Next, say Kiddush and Shechianu, and voila, first cup of wine. Many people skip the ritual hand washing here, but this might just be the year to bring this custom back. Traditionally, you just pour water from a pitcher first over one hand, then over the other. There's no blessing for this the first time. Next, we dip a vegetable into the salt water. The blessing is Bore Peri Ha'adama. Now, remember that stack of three matzot? Take the middle one out and break it in half. Half of this will become the afikomen. That gets wrapped in a napkin. Return the other half to the middle of the stack. In many homes, an adult will hide the afikomen, and the children have to find it. The older custom is that the children will swipe the afikomen and hold it for ransom later in the service, because the afikomen is required to complete the Seder. Now we come to the Magid, the telling of the story. You might be tempted to skip this because it's long, but don't do it. Telling the story of the Exodus from Egypt is the entire purpose of the Passover Seder. The Magid begins with the four questions. Although much loved, this really is an optional part of the Seder. The important thing is that somebody ask a good question to get the conversation started over dinner. According to the Talmud, if nobody can think of a better question, these will do. We begin with a brief history of our people, starting with Abraham, how we got to Egypt, and how the Egyptians enslaved us. We cried out to God, and God brought us out of Egypt. We list the ten plagues, blood, frogs, vermin, beasts, cattle disease, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and the death of the firstborn. For each of these plagues, we remove a drop of wine from our cup. This is to symbolize that our joy is lessened by the suffering of others. Next, we explain the three big symbols of Passover. The shank bone, representing the Passover sacrifice. Matzah, which represents both slavery and freedom. And the maror, the bitter herb, representing the bitterness of our lives in servitude. We end the telling of the story by recognizing that each of us needs to feel as though we were personally freed from Egyptian servitude. Then we say the blessing and have the second cup of wine. And now, because we're about to eat, we have the second ritual hand washing. The blessing is Al Netilat Yadayim. We say two blessings before our first taste of matzah. The first is the motzi. Then we say a special blessing just for the matzah, Al Achilat Matzah. Now you gotta gird your loins because it's time to taste the bitter herb. The blessing is Al Achilat Maror. Eat this with matzah or dipped in haroset. Then we can put some haroset and maror between two pieces of matzah and eat them like a sandwich. You can begin with the bottom matzah from the stack. There's no blessing for this combo. And finally, the meal is served. You might be tempted to stop here, but don't do it. If you stop the Seder here, you're missing half the party. Finish the entire meal, including dessert, before continuing. Conclude the meal by eating the afikomen together. Refill the wine cups and say the blessing after the meal, thanking God for providing food for everyone. We then say the blessing for the third cup of wine. Fill everyone's cup one last time and fill an extra cup for the prophet Elijah. If you have a cup on the table for Miriam, that should be filled with water as well. Many families open the front door and welcome Elijah into the home. Next, we say some psalms of thanksgiving and finish with the blessing for the fourth cup of wine. Finally, we declare the Seder complete and wish each other Lishana Haba'a Birushalayim next year in Jerusalem. If everybody at the table still wants to party, there are usually some fun games and songs at the end of the Haggadah. 
finally, to make sure you have a great little Seder, keep it simple, keep it fun, and keep asking questions. Ah, <laughs>